One of my favorite types of content to submit to stock photography agencies is editorial. The reason for this is you can do a lot more with it without needing any kind of release. So for instance, if I go to an event and I want to film or take pictures of just the general crowd, or maybe I want to do something that involves a name brand or something along those lines, I can shoot that as editorial and not have to worry about needing releases in most cases. One of the most confusing things about getting started with editorial content is that each site kind of accepts something a little bit different. So Shutterstock, they'll allow you to have people, products, all kinds of stuff. They're pretty um, lenient as far as what they accept as editorial, and you can also do videos. Whereas a site like Adobe will do what they call illustrative editorial. So they're not wanting people in these images. They're just wanting more like a building or a sign or something really general that might look good in a publication, but it's probably um, less likely to get them sued. So let's get into it and take a look at a few examples. Here we are on Shutterstock. You're seeing a lot of like paparazzi style images here on the most popular. I'm unsure which is more popular between Shutterstock and Getty as far as the editorial goes, but I do know Shutterstock accepts content from pretty much anyone, which makes them a little bit different than Getty because you have to actually be accepted. And you're probably going to be a journalist if you're doing uh, certain types of editorial for, for Getty. A huge bonus of Shutterstock is they allow you to use video as well. And they're actually one of the few sites that does that. On 5 is owned by Shutterstock now, and they have very similar rules. You can upload a pretty wide range. You can have people, brands, um, about everything I submit for Pond5 gets accepted. And Shutterstock has a pretty good acceptance rate if you have something that's pretty relevant to what their audience might be looking for. But Pond5 also allows photos and video, which makes them one of the better sites for editorial. Shutterstock obviously has much a much larger audience, though. Dreams Time is not to be slept on either. Um, they allow photos and video, and they do accept quite a bit. Um, it can have people. And look right here. This is actually um, some content that I submitted. And it was just from a local festival. And anytime you get put on the front page like that, you're going to get a $5 bonus, which is kind of cool. And they also give you a better, um, a better rate for anything that you sell. But Dreams Time does a really good job. They're right there with um, Shutterstock and Pond5. I'd say I actually sell more through Dreams Time than I do through Pond5. Um, so that makes them a great option, in my opinion. Next, we're going to take a look at iStock slash Getty, and they have a distinction because you have to apply for certain types of editorial with, with iStock slash Getty, and it seems to be closed off to um, more credentialed journalists rather than just your everyday stock photographer like myself. Uh, I do submit some editorial images to them. Um, they do not allow you to submit any video if you're um, not one of their special partners. And last is Adobe Stock. Again, this is considered illustrative editorial. And if you notice, you're not seeing a whole lot of faces or anything like that. It's more, it's more focused on a brand or a concept or, or something like that. Um, it's it's the most restrictive of, of any of the sites mentioned as far as submitting editorial content. That's not to say that um, I don't ever submit editorial content to them. Um, I actually do. And a lot of like the local architecture and stuff like that sells really well through Adobe. So just because they're more restrictive doesn't mean that you should just completely forget about uh, submitting to them. Editorial content can be a little confusing when you're first getting started, but it's one of the best types of photography to do if you're looking to build your skills and make a name for yourself in the community. Not only do I submit these 
videos to the stock agencies, but I'll also pitch them to news sites and put them in a local YouTube videos. And so that's a way to get a lot of purpose out of just a few different clips and and use them in a variety of ways. And that helps to get your name out there and and to build an audience and potential customers. I don't make my money off of stock photography. I make a little bit of money, which is nice, but I have a day job and I also do photography on the side. And so anything I make from stock photography is just a bonus on top of that. And finding ways to multi-purpose this content is just another way of leveraging that and, and making some additional money and uh, hopefully free advertisement. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Till the next time.